Some of them will just strangle you and kill you, but won't eat you. I am a little bit uneasy now about the snakes. We had some hikes planned. And now I'm kind of scared to go on these hikes. What's up guys? Good morning. We got a new fridge. If you guys saw one of our last episodes, you probably know about it. We're super excited. It's an awesome fridge. I put the milk too close to the cooling unit and there was like a layer of ice in the top of the milk. So now I'm trying to steam slushy milk for our lattes. Melting it. It's beginning. It's actually starting to steam and froth. I was pretty worried. I don't know how good this is going to be because I think when milk freezes, like the water in it freezes and then like the creamy part doesn't freeze. This could just be the creamiest cup of coffee you've ever had in your life. About a tea? Me a mode? Oh my goodness. A little leaf, flower, something. That was beautiful. When we first started dating, Trent had a job that he had to be at at 6 a.m. in the morning. He would wake up and make me coffee as he woke up first. And every morning I just got accustomed to him making us coffee in the mornings and getting the day started. That was almost three years ago. And ever since then, we've been through multiple jobs, multiple houses. Now we're here in the van and it's kind of tradition for him to get up, make us both coffee in the morning, get our day started. His coffee has gotten significantly better. I will say that. I've only made bread a few times in my life, but never sourdough until in the van. So I really don't even know what it's like to make sourdough with like a regular oven. But I've been having a blast making it in the van. Trent's starter is all set up. The bread is on the first rise of the day. So hopefully later tonight we'll have some beautiful bread to eat. We're trying to get out of here and go make the most of this day. But Trent is really comfortable here dragging his feet. I'm playing this game that is actually sent to us by Walkabout Games. Uh, Walkabout Games is sponsoring this episode. They sent us this game called Wanderlust Travel Stories ahead of time, pre-release. I'm getting the first try and I am hooked. It's actually a digital travel experience. So you get to decide where these characters go. You visit more than 20 countries. You go to Europe, Africa, South America, Asia, even Antarctica. There's four long stories, five short stories, and you get to play four different characters. The best part about this game is that it's slow gaming. You can just kind of like slowly play it a little bit at a time here and there. It's really fascinating because I know a lot of people have read those choose your own adventure books where you get to choose the left door, or the right door, but they all kind of go to the same type of endings. This isn't like that. You actually get to make meaningful choices that changes the outcome of the story, that changes the people's emotional response to the world. So this game's actually gonna be released on September 26th. If you guys wanna pre-order it, you can check our link in the description right now. If it's after the 26th and you guys are watching this, grab that link to go pick it up and check it out yourselves. You guys are gonna love this. But I have been playing for probably like 30 or 45 minutes, so I guess that's enough for me today. Let's get on with our day. Today we're actually in El Valle de Anton. El Valle de Anton? El Valle de Anton. It's similar to Boquete in that it's a little mountain town with a big um, American immigrant population but we got here late at night in the dark. We haven't really explored it yet. Also, I just realized we're totally matching today. Oh, nice. Twins. Great minds, you know. A Valle de Anton is actually really, really cool because it's this huge volcano. And at the very top of the volcano is like a little mountain range in a circle. And the city is in the middle of it. It's really beautiful. And we're excited to go explore today before it starts to rain. But first, I want to introduce you to our host. This is Leo. Hey Leo, don't bite me please. I'm like a little scratchy scratch. <laughs> Leo is the king of this property. We're actually parked in the beautiful little driveway of one of our followers' houses. Thank you, Zach, for letting us park here. Zach actually isn't even home right now, but he was so generous to let us park somewhere safe up here in El Valle. 
And uh, Leo is keeping everything in check, don't you worry. Zach is also another guy that lives in his van. Yeah. He lives in his van in the States, but he owns a property here in El Valle, and he said if you guys are in the area, you have a safe place to park. So while we're here parked somewhere safe, we're gonna leave the van, we're gonna get on the bike. Whoa! <laughs> Bienvenidos. Estamos manejando en una casa carro oh, sí? por Argentina. Desde Argentina? No, 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 desde los Estados Unidos por Para Argentina. Por Argentina, sí. Y hoy estamos en El Valle. Wow. Sí. This that is so cool. The best way to fill it is just go with your finger all through the body. It's, it's soft, right? Yeah. He just wants to camouflage with my beard. Oh, oh your beard. Hey, oh, it tickles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did he fly off? Yeah. Yeah. This is not ready. Oh, it's tickling. Oh, it's tickling so bad. <laughs> Why don't I say I tell you some secret? <laughs> when I was in first grade in Miss Curry's class, Everyone got their own little monarch caterpillar and we each had a little box for it on our desk and for maybe like a month or six weeks we fed it leaves every day, we watched it develop into a chrysalis and then evolve and come out as a butterfly and then we all released the butterflies together at a big butterfly ceremony and waved them off to Mexico. And I haven't really seen any since. This is cool. Maybe this is one of the offspring of one of my one of my old caterpillars. Thank right. you. So Thank you. Yeah. Okay. You guys have a great yeah. day. These guys here at the butterfly sanctuary gave us some recommendations. They said maybe you should go to the Serpentario. Of course, that's where Trent wants to go. Come uh, on, people. I want to go hiking and like maybe camping and exploring yeah. in the jungle around here. And I feel like if I go to a snake education center, <laughs> they're gonna scare me into not wanting to go <laughs> into the jungle by myself. A lot of these animals used to be pets and then they became too big, people got scared of them. And it's hard to know what to do with animals once they become too big and they're a little bit more dangerous. So they take them here and then these guys protect them, feed them raw meat, not small children, everybody wins. Uh -huh. This is Houdini, he's a rainbow boa. Apparently he's not venomous, he's about 15 or 16 years old. He seems very lovely. Hay los colores, muy... Uh... Uh -huh. That's the rainbow boa. Yeah. yeah I don't weird. know if the that's camera really can cool. pick that up or not, but you can see when the sun hits him just right, he wow. has like these blue rainbow sheens all over his body. Yeah. How's it feel? Not great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just like a giant muscle. It's just yeah. like a giant tongue. <laughs> okay. okay. See you. Gracias. <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, <laughs> this guy is thick. That's like thicker than a Subway sandwich. <laughs> I feel like before learning about all these snakes and all the different things that are dangerous here in Panama, I felt a lot more secure. Now that I know that there are giant mussels crawling around out there that want to bite you and eat you and attack you with venomous fangs, I'm actually kind of worried. It just amazes me that all these places are tucked away inside nature in these little corners of the jungle, but it's also like a neighborhood, like there's a house across the street. Totally blows my mind. And I think it was really awesome to come and learn about the reptiles, the caimans, the turtles, the snakes. I am a little bit uneasy now about the snakes. We had some hikes planned. 
And now I'm kind of scared to go these, on these hikes. These snakes are everywhere. A lot of them are venomous. A lot of them are hungry and aggressive. Some of them will just strangle you and kill you, but won't eat you. Like how, how crazy is that? If you're gonna kill me, at least eat me or something. Anyway, we're gonna try and keep some positive thoughts. Yeah. I think we're gonna head back to the van, but we're gonna hit the grocery store on the way and my loaf of bread should almost be done rising soon. And then we'll be able to make bread. Puppy looking fresh. Oh boy, that has risen. It's it's rising he for sure. He hath riseth. He hath riseth. Anyway, I have until like 7:30, so like two and a half hours more rising. Then we're gonna bake this puppy. This what? This puppy. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but Trent calls his breads and his doughs puppy. All of them. This puppy, that. This puppy, this. Sometimes I call you my puppy. He never calls me his puppy. Just his dough. While we're waiting for Trent's lovely puppy to rise, we're gonna make Frank's food. We've been making Frank's dog food from scratch recently because we haven't found consistently reliable, healthy dog food for the dog. So we decided to just take matters into our own hands. He loves the food. He's got great energy. His coat looks good. We're really happy with it. It's a super simple recipe. It's actually in our cookbook, which is linked right here. If you're interested in picking that up, I'm gonna whip it up right now. This is about a week's worth of food for Frank. Morning and evening meals, kidney beans, mixed vegetables, a bunch of other stuff, some meat. Let's put this into action. This homemade dog food recipe is super easy to manage because after you cook everything, it kind of turns into like a rice and hamburger mush and you can divvy it up really easily and then it kind of looks like wet dog food and Frank absolutely loves it. All right guys, so I'll be honest, Allie has probably made for me every dish that she claims she makes extremely well, except for this dish right here. I've never had it from her. That's a lie. You don't remember these? I made these for you one time and you took them on a climbing trip. And you, I think you were with Sabo. It might've been the time you went and sent uh, your V10. Oh yeah? It's possible. These are send meatballs? These are send balls right here. I don't are know if they, you guys... Are they Swedish meatballs? No, no, they're Italian. Oh, Italian These meatballs. These are Italian, come on. What's the difference? I don't, I'm Italian, I'm not Swedish. Mm. I don't know, <laughs> I'm making them. Whenever I think of meatballs, I always think of Swedish meatballs. It's just like the phrase that comes to mind. When you think of meatballs, you think of like spaghetti and meatballs, right? But when I think of the term meatballs, I always think Swedish meatballs. Like Ikea? When, when I think of Swedish meatballs, I think of Ikea's meatballs. I don't eat at Ikea. <laughs> anyway, Trent sent V10 bouldering, which is insane for anyone that boulders. And I'm pretty sure this was the meal I packed you for that climbing trip, because I was really sad. I was in yoga teacher training, so I couldn't go with him that weekend. And of course, he'd been trying this problem for like a month. I was with him every time, and the one time I wasn't there, he sent, of course. I'm gonna say mustache alert, and I am half naked in this video, but we'll insert a clip right here of me sending B10. Pretty good looking loaf. Gotta make a relief cut in this puppy. In this what? In this puppy. Do you see? Did you hear that? 
It's a puppy. All right, those meatballs are looking absolutely delicious. Buen provecho. Super excited to dig in. You want to see how these puppies taste? Yeah, they might be a little hot, be careful. Oh. Do they taste Swedish? Yeah. No, you're supposed to say Italian. Italian. <laughs> very good. I like it. Good. They're very soft. Mm. Yeah, tender. Yeah, I like that. Good. Cannot believe we held all those snakes today. Ooh. And like I said, we had some, some hikes planned and I'm like thinking twice. I'm scared of the snakes now. The more you know, <laughs> they're everywhere and they're ready to get you. So for now on, for sure, we're going to be much more diligent about the possibility of snakes everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. On Super the lookout scary. for sure. <laughs> We hope you guys enjoyed this video. Come along on this adventure with us today. If you guys liked the video, show us by giving us a thumbs up. Thank you so much. Subscribe to the channel if you guys aren't already. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Talk to you soon, guys. Adios. Thanks. Oh. Okay, dinner was awesome, but this was the real piece de resistance. Look at that. Pretty this. brown. Oh, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> You're burning yourself. We gotta wait like two hours before we can cut that open and I'm probably just gonna wait until the morning. So this is the real goodbye.